Io sono una nonna italiana. È un gran piacere essere una nonna italiana. Sono venuta in America nel 1956 sull'Andrea Doria. Um, C'erano qui i miei nonni e a mia zia e siamo andati a vivere in Long Island che era un posto uh, che non c'erano tanti italiani, pochissimi italiani e siamo cresciuti veramente uh, in una famiglia dove era incluso l'italiano ma quando si usciva fuori si parlava inglese. Io a cinque anni non parlavo inglese o oh, I didn't speak English. So, uh, quando sono andata a kindergarten, mi ricordo uh, che avevo la maestra che si credeva che ero così carina con la mano, mi ha portato per tutta la scuola a introdurmi a tutte le maestre, ai bambini, a dire questa è Rosaria e lei è venuta dall'Italia, bla bla bla. So, per sei mesi io non dicevo una parola, ma poi dopo sei mesi mia mamma ha detto che subito ho appreso la lingua. Così sono andata avanti negli studi e sempre ormai parlavo inglese e con mia sorella parlavo sempre inglese e con i miei genitori l'italiano. How do you feel about being Italian? Well, I kind of like know like what you were saying before when you came to uh, Long Island. Uh -huh. When you were littler, you only spoke Italian, so, and then your teacher, right, she kind of, like, you kind of learned how to speak from her. So, if I went to Italy, I would probably get used to knowing Italian, right, yeah. And then when I went to Italy, okay. I did know a little bit of Italian. Okay. And didn't you go to where your grandfather was from? Didn't you go visit? Uh, the town of Ogeta, where your father was from? Yeah, I think so. But your grandfather was very Italian. He came here in his 30s. So he was from northern Italy. I was from southern Italy, from Naples. He was from Voghera. And we uh, raised five children who were very, very much Italian. Their culture, we, he would take them to Italy very, very often. and. Our relatives, his brothers and sisters, and my cousins and aunts never came to America. So it was just us, and we continued the Italian culture. On and on. Hi, so. I know about Grandpa that he was in like business, and he would take Mom and Uncle Roberto and uh, like them to different places. And I know he liked elephants a lot, too, and art. And I just remember sometimes you tell me, um, I think when mom or who else went to Italy with them, like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you, what do you That's remember good. about uh, grandpa as far as, uh, <laughs> um, what did he like? What did he like? He you liked know? art. Art, why? And then, why do you know he liked art? What do you see? Well, he has vases, and they have like art on them. It's like of people and right. stuff like that. And what kind of uh, what kind of sculptures did he like? He liked <laughs> elephants. Remember, he, did, yeah, he, loved he liked elephants. elephants. And you have a big silver one. Right, in because the vase. where where had he lit? Where had he worked when he was young? Do you remember when Grandpa worked? No. Yes, he used to. He went to Africa. Oh. Yes, when he was very young. I didn't know that. Mi manca non 
aver avuto il piacere di poter essere più vicino alle mie zie, uh, ai miei cugini. Um, non ho avuto il senso di, di famiglia totale. So, in America c'è stata solo la mia famiglia nucleare e quello credo che mi è mancato. Mi è mancato uh, la famiglia external famiglia. What I know about Italy is that there it's a great place. It's yeah, it's very fun going there and when I go, I kind of understand the Italian cuz you talk it a lot at home, so I kind of when I hear people talking, it's like, "Oh, I know what that means." So something like that. And I find it really fun going there. I went to Rome and I saw the Colosseum. What else did you do in Rome? We went on a scavenger hunt. Oh, where? And it was like around, all around Rome, some like somewhere. And you would look for little um, Italian like monuments and stuff like that. Okay. And you would, and Bri Brianna did it with me. And so we went to the Colosseum and I really liked it. It looked really cool. Cause I always saw pictures, but I never went there. So when I went there, I thought it looked really cool. When I like met the other children, I didn't really, they spoke Italian and I spoke English, so I was like eh. But then as time passed, like a couple minutes, hours and such, so I kind of got to know what they were saying a little bit and I actually made friends, which was really fun. By the time I did get to high school, they did have an Italian program, and I was able to take it in ninth grade. And I studied uh, Italian for four years. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have uh, teachers who weren't American-born, who had come from Italy, who were actually very erudite in their um, in their language and literal, that we were able to really study deep into um, advanced Italian literature. I was able to read uh, the Divine Comedy. We read, uh, we learned about Petrarca and Boccaccio, and that has always, always stayed with me. When my daughter uh, decided uh, to uh, attend college, she went to Georgetown University and um, she was enamored with the uh, Italian program there. Her, her heritage, her Italian heritage, was so strong that she, she never spoke Italian, Anna, my daughter Annalisa, until she, was, until she went to college. I would tell her, speak to your grandfather, and she would understand him, but she would never, she would speak to him in English. So uh, by her going to college, her Italian heritage came out, so by the time she graduated and she was able to uh, enter the field of immigration. And today, she ha she's become a very well-known Italian immigration lawyer. And this because of, her, I think, the passion that she has for immigration and her clients comes very much from who she is. And what she grew up with. How many Italian ones do you know? I know, like, hi, and like, what's your name, and stuff like that, but I don't know, like, I only know, like, the basics. I, I... Don't you sing uh, Ring Around the Rosie in Italian with your little uh, cousins? Giro, giro, tondo? Yes. <laughs> I know, ciao, and Quanti in the eye? And. Come ti chiami? And I think that's it. You probably tell Yeah, I know that. I like pasta and I have patatone and. Clear, I'm sorry. And. I like ricotta, 
We have that. And we have cheesecake, ricotta cheesecake, that. And, yeah. You grew up eating what? I grew up eating pasta. Pastina. And pastina. Right? Yeah, I love pastina. Pastina. And do you help cook sometimes? Yeah, I sometimes help you cook, like, the pasta and cooking with you. It's, it's really fun because I actually learn how to cook by you sometimes. Do I follow recipes? No. Good. That's why it's easy to learn by Because <laughs> one Cause time it comes out well and another time and it you doesn't. just, yeah. <laughs> during, um, during Christmas time, we, right? What yeah. do we make? We make... We make this. Famous truffoli, right? Yeah. That, and it's really good. Yeah, that you make. Actually, yeah. they're famous in Naples, right? And we make the dough. And what are you famous for? We roll out the the, the dough, and then we cut it, and then you oh, and then I make roll little it into balls, little balls, right? Yeah. And then we fry it, and then we add the honey. We melt the honey, mm -hmm. and we mix it. We make a little mound, right? Yeah. So. Yes. It's really good. It's really good, right. And what else? And we... Make fish, right? Yeah. You don't love bacala, don't, but that's no. famous, right? We yeah. usually make bacala, uh, mm -hmm. and we make uh, sort of a lot of uh, dishes, right? Yeah. A lot of good fish dishes. Yeah. I don't make all of them. You don't make all of them. No, we make some of them. And what else? Panettone. Well, yeah, we don't make it. We have. We don't it. make it. We buy it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? It was very difficult for when I was little, when we first came to America, to find panettone because we lived on Long Island and there was no panettone. Finding Italian products, I guess, wasn't as difficult if you lived in an Italian community, if you lived downtown in Manhattan, or if you lived you know, in various Italian enclaves, but on Long Island, it wasn't that easy. So uh, olive oil cost a fortune years ago. Very, very expensive. Probably was exceptional olive oil, but it was very expensive. I remember my dad calling my mom every morning from work and asking her what they were, what they were gonna eat that night. That was really, I remember that. In my family, uh, we did the same thing. My husband didn't call me and ask me what we were eating because by the time we were finished with all the, you know, when my kids were growing up, it was sports, it was dancing lessons, music lessons. So by the time the day ended, it was usually eight, nine o'clock at night. But my husband would always wait at the dinner table and that's when we would have dinner whenever everybody got home. So that was, that's I think is the Italian tradition in, in me and in my husband to ca we want it to be a family. And I think um, that's what Italians do. I agree with you, because when we have dinner, I sit with mom, dad, and, and Brianna. And we never really don't sit any, like, together. We're always, when it's dinner time, you come and you sit with your family. It's and you wait until everybody's done. La religione è molto molto importante e fa parte della cultura italiana come io sono cresciuta. We were, we were able to succeed. As immigrants, we were able to succeed because of the faith that we had. And I think that my grandchildren have great faith, right? Yeah. And great faith, right? Yeah. Mara, in what way do you, as an Italian, feel you have great faith? Well, I go to religion, and I went to church in Italy also. Uh -huh. And I serve in Mass. You're an altar girl, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's very important, <laughs> yes. Well, at Christmas, um, we, there are ornaments that grandpa and you and your family, of course, you got every month, they're gold ornaments, and you would get them every grandpa month. Grandpa would collect, would collect them. ornaments, right. And then now we have 
boxes of them that we put on the tree every year. Right, and you help me put, put the them tree on up. The tree. Yeah. Yes, yes, and it's it reminds us of Grandpa, but mm -hmm. it's also yeah. traditional. We do it mm -hmm. together as a family. We go to midnight mm -hmm. mass, right, as a family, yeah. I, and then. We come back and we go to sleep because we know that Pablo <laughs> Natale comes in the morning, right? Yeah. Not at night. No. Right. <laughs> Tr traditions transform. They, they never remain the same. It could be different. It was different from my grandmother, my mom, and me. And it definitely will be different with them. It just, it's always there, but it will always transform. I have a dream that she will grow up as a kind and good person <laughs> and continue to learn about her Italian heritage and hopefully pass it on to her family in the future. And then they'll pass and it on. And they'll pass it on and it'll, it will stay. It will always stay, right? In, mm -hmm. in one little piece it will stick. Like a puzzle. Like a puzzle. So, piece. Yes. <laughs>